This is Fox 28 News at 10. Good evening. A lot of news to get to tonight. I'm Karen Franzak. And I'm Tom Powell. Thank you for being here. Churches are paying to teach sex education in the second largest school district in Michigan. And last year, Retta, short for reason enough to act, taught sex ed inside at least three public schools. Elkhart Memorial High, Elkhart Central High, and Pierre Moran Middle School. Fox 28's Alexis Gray is in the studio with more on this Fox 28 investigation. Retta claims its sex ed curriculum is not based on religion, but that claim contradicts its own branding and its state and federal records as a registered nonprofit. We have two people that go in, a man and a woman. This is a promotional video for Retta. Jeff Fader is one of the group's sex educators. It looks like an attempt to push Christian morals into public schools. Um, well, I would guess that there, it's not only Christians who feel um, who feel the way that we do about marriage being the best place for sex to be. Fader told us his curriculum is not faith-based, but Retta describes itself as a faith-based resource center. Fader also told us most of Retta's funds come from local church donations. Registered as a nonprofit, Retta is exempt from paying income taxes. So we decided to check those out. Page one of Retta's 2014 tax form describes the group's mission, quote, to provide life-affirming services building Christ-centered families. And on page 13, you'll find Retta's budget for abstinence-only sex ed, quote, to prevent emotional and spiritual baggage. If it was working, I don't think I would have a job. You might remember Teresa Debo from our first investigation on sex ed. As an STD prevention specialist for the health department, Debo supports teaching abstinence. She does not support leaving out information about contraceptives. Because according to the CDC, more than half of high schoolers are already having sex. A majority of her students believed that it was safer to use two condoms versus one, which actually would increase the risk of that condom breaking and, you know, exposing you to STDs or pregnancy. But a lot of these kids thought that two is better than one. Contraceptives are not a part of Retta's curriculum. So we asked Fader what would happen if a student asked about them. The answer would be that condoms are not 100% effective against either pregnancy or all STDs. If something is proven to be 99% effective, then how can you argue with that? I mean, it is what it is. A fact is a fact. Here's another fact. Indiana scores higher than the national average on both STD rates and teen births. A good majority of it could have been prevented. Despite teaching abstinence only, Retta also runs a confidential pregnancy testing service. Along with a mobile ultrasound unit, it admits is aimed at teenagers. We scheduled a tour with this mobile ultrasound unit you see behind me, which Retta admits it parks in high traffic areas like this to advertise to students and parents. Hours ago, Retta canceled that tour. The director this morning told me that's because they co-own this unit with a national group and they need to request permission from them for us to take a camera inside. When we told the director we're still interested in requesting that permission, I was told that this tour is not relevant to our story and that Retta will no longer be cooperating with our report in any way. We wondered if Elkhart Community Schools knew about Retta's dual roles. So we went to a school board meeting to ask district administrators. I had a couple questions. That's Doug Thorne. He's an attorney and the custodian of public records for the district. It's a faith-based group that's coming into a yeah, public Indiana, school. Is, do you see why there might be a concern there? I understand where there might be a concern, but for example, if they talk about abstinence, Indiana law requires that abstinence be part of a health education curriculum. But the law doesn't say abstinence should be taught by an outside group with a religious affiliation. Thorne told us teachers stay inside the room during the RETA presentation, overseeing the curriculum to make sure they don't discuss anything faith-based. But when we pressed him on how he knew that, Obviously, I haven't been involved in the classroom. This is like fourth-hand information. Right. Despite no records of contracts or invoices by Retta, within 48 hours, Elkhart Schools presented us with a Retta lesson plan outline. Elkhart Superintendent Dr. Robert Hayworth refused our interview request. A district spokeswoman saying, quote, he would never talk to us about this subject because it's not his expertise. So we met with Deputy Superintendent Don McGrath. How does a group enter three public schools and interact with children in the classroom without the top 
ever knowing about it? Well, I'm the top as well. I oversee the instruction. So we have the documentation of the groups that come in. We asked McGrath about Retta's faith-based mission statements. Is any of that language concerning? We're responsible for providing education aligned with the Indiana academic standards. And the standards require that we expose our students to the community resources that we have. I guess I'm not understanding what resources Retta provides that the health department isn't already providing. Sure. Our responsibility is to um, inform the students of the resources that are in our community. But why explore it through a faith-based organization? Why even get near that line? This organization provides resources for our community, and we are re responsible for exposing our students to community resources. The state didn't say RETA is responsible. That is our authority to determine how the curriculum will be delivered. We wanted to press McGrath on how the district reached that determination, but the district limited our interview to 15 minutes.